Okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit about this thing called integration or summing, finite sums, Riemann sums. Riemann sums, by the way, are a term that are, has been invented only to torture high school calculus students, as you probably suspected. The key to all these things is just to think that what we're doing is we're adding and we're approximating how well we can add in order to come up with some estimate. So let's do a quick and dirty problem. This will kind of cover some parts of the finite sum and also the so-called Riemann sum. Imagine I have some function y is a function of x and we want to estimate the area under this function from a certain point a to another point B. Well, all that our good friend Riemann did was say, well, why don't we just cut it up into little strips and then we'll approximate the height of each strip based on where it intersects the function. And then from that, we'll have a relatively good estimate of the area. So for example, if I divide this into a bunch of different little strips, now I have a few choices. What's the height of each strip? I can say the height's going to be wherever the left-hand edge intersects the function. Now, obviously, we're, there's a little bit of area that we're leaving on the table here, so this is going to be a low estimate. Or, alternatively, I can say, let's take it the high side. And here you can see that we've got a little extra, so we're kind of overestimating. Now, think about this. What, in the, what happens in the limit? where the size of this particular strip gets smaller and smaller. When the strip is infinitesimal in width, then the blue and the red rectangles become the same size and the total sum becomes exactly that of the area, which is what an integral is. So let's do a real problem. The problem I want to do is just a simple sum of f of x equals x squared from 0 to 5. This will perfectly illustrate what we're, what we're talking about. So here's x squared, and now we're just going to mark it off. Here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we're just going to do it in equal intervals. And I'm going to do both the right-hand and left-hand side simultaneously. We could also do the midpoint. That would be just unnecessary work. Perhaps slightly more accurate, but unnecessary work, since all we're going to do ultimately is integrate and forget all this crap after a while anyway. So. Here are my red rectangles for the left hand, and then I have my blue rectangles for the right hand. Whoops, that one's not right. So you can see that one's going to be low, the other one's going to be high. What the width of each of these intervals here, let's not forget, from 0 to 1, the width of, width of each of these intervals is 1, so it's easy to calculate the area of a rectangle length, length times width. So let's make a little table to make our lives a little bit easier. So we have 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, and 4 to 5. So let me expand this a little bit. So we'll say this is the left. We'll say this is the right, and then we'll have left area and right area. So
So now we just have to plug in the numbers here, and we'll do we'll color code it to make it more obvious. So from zero to one, zero squared is going to be zero. One to two, one squared is one. Two to three, two squared is four. Three to four, three squared is nine. Four to five, four squared is sixteen. And then on the right hand side, zero to one, one squared is one. Two squared is four. Three squared is nine. Four squared is sixteen. Five squared is twenty-five. So now we just have to calculate the area. So we have zero, and the width obviously is one. So zero times one is zero. One times four is four. Uh, sorry. One times one is one. Four times one is four. Nine times one is nine. Sixteen times one is sixteen, which gives us a total of five. Fourteen and sixteen is thirty. So this would be in units squared, right? And then on the right hand side, one times one is one. Four times one is four. 9, 16, 25. So we're going to come up with a, a higher number. Obviously, we're going to get 30 plus 25 is 55. And that kind of represents how much bigger the right-hand side is than the left-hand side for this function that kind of takes off like a hockey stick. This is also going to be unit squared. So these are areas, they're approximations of the sum of the area under this curve. So the same thing, these are both approximations then of the integral from 0 to 5 of x squared. It's not exact, it's just approximation. So that's a really simple problem. I don't think there's any more to know than that about Riemann summing. Maybe there's one other little thing. If you have a function that goes negative, imagine you have a function that looks like this. And you want to know the area under the curve from here to there. Well, this part here, this is a negative area. Just like a negative number, a negative area detracts from the so-called positive area above the curve. I think that's everything there is to know about Riemann summing.